Hello and welcome back to our YouTube channel, on today's episode we're going to be having a particular gentleman who we've discussed previously on our channel, but then again. When you're making moves like this on several levels, it's only bound to get you more sightings. Safe to say this man shoots for the stars every time. So today we're going to be talking about Elon Musk and his recently announced Starlink internet project. And without wasting any more time, let's get into the video. Now when you think of billionaire entrepreneur Elon Musk, chances are high that you think of his electric car company, Tesla, space exploration venture SpaceX or his eventful purchase of Twitter. Maybe you know him as one of the richest people on Earth. You might be less familiar with Starlink, a venture from Musk that aims to sell internet connections to almost anyone on the planet through a growing network of private satellites orbiting overhead. After years of development within SpaceX, Starlink picked up the pace in 2021. Now, nearly two years and dozens of successful launches later, Starlink boasts over 2,000 functional satellites orbiting overhead. Starlink now offers service in 37 countries worldwide, though the budding broadband provider still faces a backlog of prospective customers waiting to receive equipment and start service. That list of countries includes Ukraine, where Musk said in February of 2022 that additional satellite internet terminals were en route following the Russian invasion and amid Russian attempts to jam the signal, a move that cost U.S. taxpayers $3 million, according to a report from the Washington Post. Starlink isn't without its controversies. Scientific community members have raised concerns about the impact of Starlink's low-Earth orbit satellites on night sky visibility. Meanwhile, satellite internet competitors, including Viasat, HughesNet and Amazon's Project Hyper, have also noticed Starlink's momentum, prompting regulatory jousting and attempts to slow Musk down. Most recently, DISH has taken issue with Starlink and its claims that 5G expansions in the 12 GHz band would interfere with its satellite signals. This August, nearly two years after Starlink secured nearly $885.5 million in grant funds from the Federal Communications Commission, the FCC decided to reverse the decision and cancel Starlink subsidies, claiming that the service failed to meet program requirements. FCC Chairwoman Jessica Rosenworcel stated that they could not afford to subsidize ventures that are not delivering the promised speeds or are not likely to meet program requirements, while also noting that Starlink's technology has real promise. Now after all this talking, I'm sure the question what is Starlink is already prancing around inside your mind. Technically a division within SpaceX, Starlink is also the name of the spaceflight company's growing network of orbital satellites or constellation. The development of that network began in 2015, with the prototype satellites launched into orbit in 2018. In the years since, SpaceX has deployed thousands of Starlink satellites into the constellation across dozens of successful launches, the most recent of which took place on October 27 and delivered another 53 satellites into low Earth orbit. That brings the total number of satellites in orbit to just over 3,200. SpaceX's Starlink hardware includes a satellite dish and router, which you'll set up at home to receive the signal from space. Starlink is ideally suited for areas of the globe where connectivity has typically been a challenge, the Starlink website reads. Unbounded by traditional ground infrastructure, Starlink can deliver high-speed broadband internet to locations where access has been unreliable or completely unavailable. All you need to do to make the connection is set up a small satellite dish at your home to receive the signal and pass the bandwidth on to your router. The company offers several mounting options for rooftops, yards, and the exterior of your home. There's even a Starlink app for Android and iOS that uses augmented reality to help customers pick the best location and position for their receivers. Starlink service is only available in select regions in the US, Canada and abroad at this point, but it can now boast nearly half a million customers and is active on all continents. Expect the coverage map to grow as more satellites enter the constellation. Eventually, Starlink hopes to blanket the entire planet in a usable, high-speed Wi-Fi signal, including for moving vehicles and in-flight Wi-Fi. Starlink is now accepting orders on a first-come, 
first serve basis, so you'll need to request service, put down a $99 deposit, and then wait your way through the backlog. During its beta in 2021, Starlink said that some pre-orders could take as long as six months to fulfill in some regions, Starlink now says that new orders may not be fulfilled until late in 2023. The service was initially billed at $99 per month, plus taxes and fees, and an initial payment of $499 for the mountable satellite dish and router you'll need to install at home. In March 2022, despite earlier predictions from SpaceX executives that the hardware costs would come down over time, SpaceX raised those prices to $110 per month and $599 up front. $110 per month is a lot for an internet connection, especially one that isn't nearly as fast as a fiber connection. Still, Musk is betting that the cost will be worth it for people who have thus far lived without access to a reliable connection. In April of 2021, SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell said that Starlink wanted to keep pricing as simple and transparent as possible and had no plans to introduce service tiers into the mix. However, that approach changed in 2022 with the introduction of a new premium tier with a scan array that's twice as big as the standard plan and with download speeds ranging from 150 to 500 megabits per second, that tier costs $500 per month, plus an initial payment of $2,500 for the equipment. Starlink is taking orders for that tier now and will launch the service shortly. Despite promising to blanket the entire globe in coverage by fall, Starlink service is currently limited to select regions in select countries. Still, the coverage map will grow considerably as more satellites join the constellation. Per Musk, the list of countries currently serviced by the growing network of low-Earth orbit satellites includes the US, Canada, the UK, France, Germany, Austria, the Netherlands, Ireland, Belgium, Switzerland, Denmark, Portugal, Australia, and New Zealand. Starlink's pre-order agreement includes options for requesting service in other countries, including Italy, Poland, Spain, and Chile. There's still a ways to go, Starlink will likely need at least 10,000 satellites in orbit before it can claim to offer full service to a majority of the globe, and SpaceX has shown signs that it wants as many as 42,000 satellites in the constellation, that sounds like a lot of satellites if you ask me. Right now, it's only about 20% of the way there, at best, with coverage focused on regions sitting between 45 and 53 degrees north latitude. The capabilities and advantages of Starlink rest on the advantages of satellite internet access and satellite internet constellation. Of course, as mentioned, these capabilities depend on the number of satellites deployed, the type of orbits, and the underlying telecommunication infrastructure. SpaceX has launched 2,335 satellites. Most of these are still in orbit while more than a thousand have been licensed to operate. The internet service is available in more than 28 countries. Here are some specific details of the capabilities and advantages of Starlink. 1. Low Latency and High Bandwidth Starlink uses and deploys small communication satellites in low Earth orbit or so-called LEO satellites. They have lower latency than geostationary orbit or GEO satellites because they are placed at lower altitudes. Note that latency is the time it takes for data carried by electromagnetic radiation to travel from one point to another. GEO satellites have a latency of around 477 milliseconds while LEO satellites have less than 27 milliseconds. Furthermore, these LEO satellites transmit data using high-frequency bands within the K-under band with specific frequencies ranging from 12 GHz to 18 GHz and the Ka band with frequencies above 24 GHz. These frequencies are within the radio wave and microwave territories of the electromagnetic spectrum. Higher frequencies in the upper limits of radio waves and within the range of microwaves have shorter wavelengths and they cannot travel long distances without signal repeaters and amplifiers than frequencies at the lower portion of the spectrum. However, higher frequencies and shorter wavelengths translate to better data transmission quality or more specifically, wider bandwidth, lower latency, and faster transmission speed. 
The initial data transmission speeds of Starlink are at 100 megabits per second downstream and 20 megabits per second for upstream, but SpaceX has a long-term goal of achieving and providing a data transmission speed of 1 gigabit per second for downstream. Several tech reviewers and consumers have tried and tested the capabilities and performance of their Starlink kits. Neelay Patel of The Verge noted that his kit exceeded the promised data transmission speeds on several occasions with speeds topping 222 megabits per second for downstream and 24 megabits per second for upstream though his average downstream speed hovered between 30 megabits per second and 90 megabits per second. Queen of Tom's Guide experienced download speeds under 90 megabits per second during the initial testing period but saw the download speed spiking up to 200 megabits per second. Data collated and presented by Ookla showed that Starlink hit more than 100 megabits per second of download speed in 15 countries during the fourth quarter of 2021. It was also the fastest satellite internet service provider in the United States and it demonstrate triple the speed compared with wired or fixed broadband services in Australia during the same quarter. Downstream speeds below 20 megabits per second are insufficient nowadays. The promised data transmission speed and possibilities for faster speeds allow current generation and next generation broadband applications. These include support for seamless streaming of 4K videos or playing on-demand or cloud-based video games. Video conferencing services such as Zoom, Google Meet, and Microsoft Teams can also benefit from faster internet connection speed. 3. Easy to set up user terminal or kit. The Starlink satellite internet constellation does not connect directly to handsets but communicates via a terminal the size of a 12-inch square box that can be mounted on any flat surface such as on the ground or the roof of a house. The terminal has phased array antennas that pinpoint and track the position of a particular LEO satellite and it is part of an entire kit that includes a 100-foot cable for connecting to the included Wi-Fi router. Patel described his experience of setting up the terminal and the entire kit as hassle-free. It is as simple as placing the terminal in an ideal location and placing the included Wi-Fi router inside the house. The process can take less than 30 minutes. The terminal takes a couple of minutes to configure itself as it downloads the satellite schedule to keep it aligned. The review of Quain also emphasized the fact that there is even no need to plug things in because everything is already connected out of the box. The company did not even bother including a user manual or detailed instructions because the setup process is highly intuitive. However, the kit includes a poster board with a large three-step infographic guide. Be reminded that users need to download the Starlink app on their devices to complete the setup process. Another advantage of Starlink and other providers of satellite internet services is that they do not depend on physical and conventional telecommunication infrastructures. There is no need for a nearby base station unlike wireless or cellular networks or long lines of cables running through underground or above the ground transmission lines. The terminal is essentially wireless similar to a handset such as a smartphone or a wireless router. However, it is not dependent on a nearby base station. Remember that the terminal connects and communicates wirelessly to the LEO communication satellites. This general telecommunication architecture has specific advantages. The most notable one is that it allows the provision of internet services to remote areas. Millions of people in the United States and around the globe either do not have access to advanced telecommunication infrastructure or remain trapped with old generation telecommunication networks. Most providers are not interested in expanding and improving their services to remote areas because of the small potential customer base. It is also important to highlight the fact that the independence from physical conventional telecommunication infrastructures makes satellite internet services resilient from natural disasters and human-made calamities that normally affect most communities. Starlink can work even when telecommunication lines are down or there are network outages affecting the nearest base station. The terminal can also work in off-grid electricity sources. Similar to its capabilities and advantages, the limitations and disadvantages of Starlink Bank on the disadvantages of satellite internet access and satellite internet constellation. Wired broadband using optical fiber remains the dominant route for delivering internet access. 
the promises of 5G and future generation cellular network technologies can also compete against the purported promises of satellite internet services providers. Nevertheless, to understand further, take note of the specific limitations and disadvantages of Starlink. One of the main disadvantages of Starlink is that its service reliability depends on the fact that the terminal should be positioned in an area that has an unobstructed view of the sky. This means that it cannot be placed near trees or tall structures such as tall houses and buildings. It works best when placed on open ground or top of the roof. The review of Quinn noted that he received notifications that obstructions were blocking his internet connection around 9 hours each day. The app guides users in the specific direction of the obstructions. Quinn found out that his connection problem came from trees that are hundreds of feet away from the terminal but still obstructed the transmission of signals. This limitation can be a problem in forested areas, mountainsides, and dense urban cities. Patel had similar problems. His terminal was placed 60 feet away from his house, but his connection was obstructed for two hours each day. The obstructions came from the topmost portion of his house and the trees behind. The experiences of these two reviewers collectively represent the fact that the performance of Starlink is limited by line of sight. The aforesaid drawback of Starlink is also the disadvantage of MMWave 5G networks. Wireless connections using high frequencies have a line-of-sight limitation and susceptibility to obstructions. Take note that these frequencies cannot travel over long distances unlike frequencies in the middle and lower ranges of the radio wave spectrum. They cannot also pass through physical obstructions and can be limited by weather interferences. 2. More expensive than other broadband services. In the United States and other countries, the cost of connecting to Starlink has increased across the board. The introductory price for the entire kit was $499 US dollars, but it jumped to $549 US dollars and further to $599 US dollars in 2022. Of course, aside from the first cash-out cost, subscribers need to pay a monthly fee of between $99.00 US dollars to $110 US dollars. The cost is relatively expensive compared to other fixed broadband services providers and even cellular network providers. The average monthly cost of fixed broadband in the US is around $68 US dollars and 38 cents for plans with a data transmission speed of around 100 megabits per second. Cellular network plans with access to 4G and 5G networks range between 60.00 US dollars to 70 US dollars. Note that 5G networks in the US have an average speed of 100 megabits per second. For individuals that can be reached either by fixed broadband or cellular network services, especially those living in dense urban cities or areas with natural obstructions such as trees and mountains, switching to satellite internet service might not provide them with substantial benefits or a noticeable network performance gains in consideration of cost. Considering everything that's been said, is it worth all that for satellite internet connectivity? That's our time and we've come to the end of today's episode and we hope you enjoyed it and learned a thing or two. Bye for now and we'll see you in the next one.